let's talk about Crash Bandicoot for a second. Now, Crash Bandicoot was a huge success, and a pretty good game, but there was tons of room for improvement, as we're all aware. The save system was crap, the controls were terrible, and the levels and bosses were, let's face it, pretty forgettable. It set a good foundation for the series, and it was a good attempt, but it didn't master it. However, this game did. Crash Bandicoot 2 was developed by Naughty Dog only one year after the first, and is a huge improvement and is what I consider to be my second favorite game in the franchise. And remember, I'm reviewing 12. That's a lot. Crash 2 took everything that Crash 1 did wrong and made it right. Everything Crash 1 did great, Crash 2 did greater. Crash 2 is an excellent game, now let's get into why. Like we did last time, let's get our story out of the way first, since it's no Kingdom Hearts or anything, and thank god for that. Crash Bandicoot 2 picks up immediately after where the first left off. After Cortex is defeated by Crash in one of the most pitiful final bosses ever, he falls into a cave and discovers a crystal, and decides that it will help him on his quest to world domination. A whole year passes by, and Cortex and his new assistant Engine are looking for ways to use the crystals to their advantage. Engine explains to Cortex that he needs all 25 crystals to take over the world. Since none of the bosses from the first game trust him, because, come on guys, let's face it, he got them killed, he has nobody left to retrieve the crystals. However, Cortex insists that instead of finding a friend to help them, they find an enemy. Meanwhile, on a completely unrelated note, Crash and his sister Coco are relaxing in the forest when Coco's battery dies. She then asks Crash to get her a new battery. So you're off on a journey to... Wait, am I reading this correctly? Retrieve a battery for your sister's laptop in the middle of a forest? There's gotta be something wrong here. Anyway, Crash goes on a quest to find a battery when he is suddenly taken away. He then ends up in the middle of the place called the Warp Room, and Cortex then greets him and asks him to retrieve the crystals. So you're off on a journey to... work for the bad guy from the first game? There's gotta be something wrong here. I mean, sorry to spoil the game's story, but I have a feeling that the bad guy from the first game is... well, gonna be the bad guy in the second game. And it wouldn't surprise me if he was the bad guy in the third. Yep, he is! He's the bad guy in the third, and he's the bad guy in the second. Was that seriously such a big surprise? Well, our story really isn't important, because the highlight of this game isn't its story, but its gameplay. But before we get onto the gameplay, Cortex, voiced by Clancy Brown. Clancy Brown? The same guy who did Long Fang from Avatar. I can handle you by myself. Oh, and he also did Mr. Krabs. Your goal in each level is to go from beginning to end and obtain the level's crystal in the process. Oh, and not to die a thousand times like I did. This is where the game takes a sudden turn for the awesome. Crash, for one, controls much better, which is already a major improvement. One of my biggest grudges with the first game were how slippery and awful the controls felt. That's no longer an issue. Crash's controls are incredibly tight. Every jump and movement feels so precise and sharp, and it really helps, especially when the game gets harder. Crash also has some new moves. In addition to only a spin, he also has a slide, which he can perform by hitting the circle button while running, and he also has a body slam, which he can use by hitting the circle button in midair. These powers aren't useless, as there are many areas where these moves are necessary. In the new levels, you can find new types of crates. One is called a locked box, which can only be broken by using your new body slam. Another crate that has been around since the first and I forgot to mention, like an idiot, are the TNT crates, which will count down from three and then explode. Another type of crate that was added are Nitro Crates, which cannot be touched at all, or else they will immediately explode. The levels are accessed from the Warp Room, which is another major improvement, for two awesome reasons. One being that even though you only have access to five levels, you can play them in any order you want. There's no more getting stuck on a level for long periods of time. If the level is giving you trouble, you can put it off and play another one, then come back later. Also, you can save whenever you want. Wait, what? You can save whenever you want? Am I in heaven? Yes, that's right, you can save whenever you want in this game. The tediousness of finding the tunnel mugs? Gone. Having to replay a level after you saved in it? Gone. It's all gone. The save system in this game works like a save system should. Already this game looks downright amazing. Now with the way I've built this game up, you would think I like it. Well, 
Yes, I really do. I don't see why someone couldn't fucking love this game. It's in every way an improvement over the original, and there is no way, no how, you can say the first is better. Um, there was a number of sequels in this game. There was Crash Bandicoot 2 and 3, which uh, people generally say either 1 or 3 is the best. 2 is kind of like how you had Mario Brothers 2. It's kind of like the uh, odd one out, in my opinion, because they tried a lot of stuff in it, and some stuff stuck with uh, the series for 3, and a lot of stuff didn't. They kind of tried like a lot of new stuff, and it was kind of, mm, yeah. <laughs> Despite the save system being added, bonus rounds still make a return. In bonuses, you can collect extra lives in Wampa Fruit, and you don't have to worry about dying, as bonus rounds don't count your lives, and they also act as a checkpoint. So anyway, the game is what you would expect. You go from start to finish, and you collect the crystals while you go. However, this game adds a ton to the table. The levels are far more varied than Crash 1. Instead of taking the feel of an adventure going to one place, from jungles to labs and then stopping in some ruins, it instead goes all over the place. You visit tundras, jungles, forests, rivers, sewers, and even space stations. That's right, space stations. How awesome does that sound? The types of enemies also vary between each level, which is always fun. You don't see the exact same turtles everywhere, you see mechanical rats in the sewers and penguins in the tundra. It gives the game a very natural feel, walking around different environments and interacting with the life there by spinning them to death and stealing all their precious treasures. The bosses have also made a return, and they're good. They're a hell lot better than the first game's bosses, that's for sure, but they're still not great. The only boss to give me trouble was Engine, and Tiny, but only once or twice. Ripperoo is still a pushover like always, and the Komodo brothers don't give off a great first impression, as they were incredibly easy. Also, this is something that needs to be addressed. This final boss sucks. This is one of the worst final bosses I've ever seen. Now, I wasn't expecting a final boss as great as Fire 2's, but I was expecting a little bit of a challenge. For shit's sake, the boss fight is 20 seconds! It's so easy! But similar to the first game, it doesn't end immediately after you defeat the final boss. Gems make a comeback in this game, and they have a major improvement as well. Now you have a box counter. When you hit a checkpoint box, it will save the number, meaning you don't have to do it in one life. Yes! However, that's not to say the gems are easy to get. It's easy to get. Um, okay. There's a twist. Secrets. Oh my, I completely overlooked the secrets in the first game. The first game had secret paths, which led to either more boxes or gems. Of course, these secrets sucked ass. Because tell me, who was seriously gonna think to do this? These secrets aren't easy to get. Easy to Shut up. Thank you. Anyway, that's not to say they're impossible. Most of the secrets are hinted at subtly. I'm not going to give away any, as I encourage people to find them for themselves. Of course, remember that I said most. Some of the secrets are just ridiculous. I'll give one away right now. Because honestly, who's going to find that? These secrets lead to pathways and other levels, which usually contain boxes or gems. It's awesome because despite each of the levels being widely different from one another, they still feel connected. That's one thing about Crash 2 that's awesome. The levels, despite the obvious differences between them, still feel like Crash levels. They don't come out of nowhere. I'm looking at you, Titans. Levels can also contain two gems, and levels can also contain colored gems. Colored gems are usually acquired through secret paths and open platforms in other levels, which allow you to get boxes or gems. In addition to the colored gem paths and secrets, there are also death roots. Death roots can only be accessed by making it to the platform without losing a life. Aha! See what they did there? If you lose your life on the way to the platform, it disappears. It does a great job of adding challenge, but it's not tedious, something that Crash 1 really struggled with. If the great variety between the level designs and challenges wasn't enough, there's also an addition of vehicle levels. Levels where you don't have to control crash buttons that a vehicle or animal. These include riding a polar bear, using a jetpack, riding on a motorboard thing, and more. These levels don't show up too often, which I am glad. It makes you appreciate them that much more when you see them, and they don't get annoying. The only vehicle I can really complain about is the jetpack. Its controls feel very odd and out of place. It's not too difficult when you get used to it, but it's still not a whole lot of fun. However, the music for the jetpack levels is genius. Which reminds me, this game has a fantastic soundtrack as well. Crash 1's music was mostly hit or miss, very forgettable stuff. The only songs from Crash 1 that stand out to me are some of the boss themes, the title theme, the lab, and the Great Hall. 
Crash 2 fixes this. All the songs are memorable and very different. Crash 2's soundtrack is very diverse, but not too diverse. The songs sound different from one another, enough that you can tell that they are different levels. However, none of the songs sound out of place. It all sounds like Crash. The bonus and death routes have different music as well. While still using the same instruments of the level they are associated with, the bonus rounds have a more calm sound, and they also sound very happy. The death routes sound fast-paced and action-packed. All the music fits well, there is never a dull moment in the soundtrack, which is vastly different from the first one, which is full of boring and forgettable songs. Oh, and the boss themes? Awesome. Just so goddamn awesome. Crash 2 has got it all. Everything Crash 1 did wrong, Crash 2 did right. Slippery controls? Fixed. Horrible save system? Fixed. Dull soundtrack? Fixed. Unmemorable bosses? Fixed. For the most part. Crash 2 is an excellent game that I strongly recommend everyone give a try at least once. When someone says Crash Bandicoot, this is the game that comes to mind. Forget Crash 1, this is where it's at. It took everything Crash 1 did wrong and fixed it. Everything that made Crash 1 good was fixed and made great in this game. If you're looking for a good linear platformer, do not pass this game up. This game is excellent. Now the question still remains, has Naughty Dog played their trump card too early? Or will they somehow be able to follow up on the Titan? no pun intended, that they have created. Join me next time when we take a look at Crash Bandicoot 3 Warped. Hey! Hold on a second. This video isn't over. Did you know I do Let's Plays? I recently just finished Crash Bandicoot 2 with my friend John. Take a look if you want to. Feel free to check out some of my stuff or just fuck off. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time. Go fuck yourself.